All right, and the last uh, presentation of the day until the end of the day, uh, the Alan Jude. He's going to be talking to us about per VDEV properties, a proposal for new functionality in ZFS. <coughs> Uh, so this project actually uh, came out of a discussion Matt and I had at the, uh, the ZFS user conference that Dado hosted. Um, and uh, we were talking a bit about um, the being able to queue up device removals uh, because you have the problem of, you know, while I'm removing this device, a third of the data is being written to the device I want to remove next, and that could be a problem. And so we thought about, uh, you know, for a long time I've been bugging George about how can we make some of the, the Pool, or the system-wide tunables into per pool tunables. Uh, and so property is kind of uh, the way I wanted to do that. Uh, so right now, most of the tunables in ZFS are system-wide, and we'd very much like those to be per pool, because I have a lot of servers where we have an SSD-only pool and then a spinning Rust pool, and they don't necessarily need the same tuning for different things. Uh, but now that we have the allocation classes, I might actually have SSDs in my uh, spinning rust pool for the metadata, and I want to make sure that you know they get tuned with the right Q depths and, and other settings like that. Uh, or, you know, I have unbalanced LUNs, and I want to just say stop allocating from that B dev for a while and let, make the other one do more of the work, or any other administrative thing I might decide I want to do. Uh, so I wondered how could I do that, and then. Matt was like, well, you know, as part of the uh, device removal, we've actually introduced a per VDEV zap. So we already have a key value store and you can just put properties in it. Uh, so I basically set about making a, a little prototype for this uh, and actually have managed to add a comment key to zap and write a blob of text into it and get it back later. Uh, and the other thing we talked about was, if you look at a command like zpool status, it's basically the only one I can think of in ZFS that doesn't have a machine-readable version of the output. Right? ZFS list or ZFS get or zpool list, et cetera. You can all say, you know, script mode and give me tab-separated yeah. data that I can parse really easily. But zpool status has all these nice counters <laughs> and stuff, but it's all human-readable only. Uh, so I started exposing some of the the variables and members of VDEV key as read-only properties. So uh, that looks like this, where you can just do zpool get size at the VDEV name, and it tells you how big the VDEV is, or a bunch of the other bits of information that are in in the VDEV key. So you get you know the the health of the VDEV or what its A shift is, and then this made me think of George's O shift talk from last year, I think it was and how we might need to store uh, time variable geometry information per physical disk, uh, and so on. Uh, and you know, properties is an interface that everybody who administers ZFS already understands. It's well-defined and it works very well. Uh, you know, in the time since I wrote these slides uh, like 10 days ago, I've decided that we're gonna need inheritance on this as well, and <laughs> it's going to be a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> Uh, but you know, one of the other things I wanted to use it for was to provide hints to the default management tools on FreeBSD about, you know, in, for this RAID Z VDEV, when you replace the disks, you know, I have this criteria of what the replacement should look like, or uh, in FreeBSD, we usually partition the disk and then feed just one of the partitions to ZFS, because uh, we use raw swap, because we don't swap on ZFS doesn't work so well on FreeBSD yet. Um, so I need, like, to store somewhere the partition layout of how I want you to format the new disk before you add it to the pool. Uh, and so, you know, kind of a, a user property on the VDEV, uh, on the top level VDEV, made sense for that. So, this is the second iteration of the, the user interface. I like it better uh, than the first one, which basically had, you know, uh, zpool VDEV get the property and then the VDEV name and then the pool name. I, I like the at the VDEV name better. Uh, I'm not sure what it would look like for these per VDEV properties that are at the root for the inheritance, because they're not. You can, uh, those VDEVs do have names. Yeah. Uh, so, like, 
you know, mirror dash one. Right, but I mean the, the above that, the root of the pool. Uh, maybe just have a special name. Yeah, yeah, just some special name that hopefully nobody will have a, a VDEV name. Yeah. There are some reserved names. Okay. Already. So something like that. Yeah. Uh, so then the question of what, what different properties might you actually want? Um, obviously, after talking to John, is like, uh, on your special VDEV, you might want an on-off switch for each of the different types of data you might want to write to that VDEV. Uh, and then I was just thinking with this, I might want to be able to say, this data set over here, that's my S, uh, my database, I want that to all go on this special VDEV uh, or something like that too. Um, so I can, I can make a hybrid pool and pick and choose per data set what data should go where uh, or where I would prefer it to go, right? It's a, a bias. If, if the SSD is full, it has to be written somewhere else. But uh, I'm just curious what other properties people would like to see both for uh, things you can actually, policy you can express through properties, but also what read-only information is useful. Um, there's a whole VDEV stat T that has lots of useful stuff, although it doesn't persist across exports or reboots. Uh, and you know, at some point, we're knowing how much data you've actually written to the SSD as far as where leveling go be useful, although maybe smart's a better way to get that information. But what other stuff could we do? Uh, and then yes, we might need something like an inherit uh, land uh, because you know one of the, the first ones I would like to uh, do is all the stuff for the right throttling uh, becoming per disk or per VDEV. And so, you know, I would like mirror dash one to have the settings and all the disks inherit it, but I can, you know, in the same way you express policy anywhere else in ZFS, I can override it for disk if I want as well. But then, you know, I don't want to make it too complicated when I'm in, like, when the <laughs> allocator's looking through this to decide what to do, it shouldn't have to keep going through like four levels of interaction to make sure it's, it's like, oh, like, this disk is inheriting from here, which is inheriting from here. Where's the setting? <laughs> So I gotta reason about that a bit more still. Uh, but what problems do you perceive? Is that a rhetorical question? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love the idea of, of caching some of the or of a lot of the that we actually use with respect to right following the What would be the big the, the, the policy in terms of when that's updated? What would be the expectation? Uh that well, like you would do Z pool set. Like right now, they're they're live tunables. You can change on a running system. You, they are, but they are they also live in VRAM, which is much easier to make a guarantee about. Right. Um, the, um, the so I think when when you uh, do the Z pool set and change it, we'll put it in like the VDEVT or something, so that we have a copy of it in RAM and it's because yeah, we're not going to want to read the zap every time we go to do something. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, I think, I think any properties that we expose through this, we would want them to take effect immediately, yeah. as when, with other kind yeah. of Yeah, when the zpool set returns, I think we that, should be able to do that with these. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I foresee being able to set uh, whatever properties <coughs> on, like, at root, and then they get automatically propagated to all the VDS, like having yes. something similar to... Uh, just, just like uh, data set properties. Data sets, okay, that sounds... That sounds Except for snapshots. Uh, Snapshots inherit the properties, they don't copy them. That's another hackathon project from a couple of years ago, I'd like to think about. But uh, yeah, the idea is that uh, it would inherit. Um, although I also wondered with, with the queuing and stuff, if we might want to say, you know, the top level VDEV sets a max, uh, and then the children each have their own setting, but that gets really complicated really fast. So yeah. I think we'll just have uh, regular inheritance. but. I also have to look at how complicated that's going to be. Um, right now, the way I'm doing it is I'm actually using a separate IOCTL from the zpool properties, but it might make sense to not do that. Uh, the inheritance may not be so bad if right. since we can rely on kind of like the veto tree. Yeah. And so we may just be able to like, if you do something like the concept of, you know, root slash mirror dash one property set, yeah. And like, oh, I apply it to mirror one, and even his children get that. And if you attach a device to mirror one, then it inherits the. So, right. so, so you could do something like that, or if you just apply it to the root VDEV, um, or maybe in a special case, the pool to be the root VDEV, and then those properties would just get <coughs> down to all the top level. 
Yes. Yeah. Same, same as for data sets. Basically. Yeah. Uh, ideally, you would want it to work. Default inherited or like overridden. Yeah. And you have like what's the source of the. Yes, the exactly. Uh, right. In particular, yeah. having to add the source so that we know that you know it doesn't have one, so it inherits and so on. Yeah. Because uh, ideally, from an administrative perspective, you want it to be exactly the same as the properties work on the data sets, because anyone who administers ZFS understands that now, uh, and using that same model, I think works best. Um, and just like, so what, could you give me an example of like property that you would want to be inherited, if that makes sense? Because like what, what I'm kind of struggling to, to imagine is like, um, I have a, let's say like a latency something and it's got all, it's got, let's just say eight children or something. Mm -hmm. Um, if I say like, if I said, let's say like number of active rights that can be, um, right there, and I set that on like the rate T uh, top level we dev, and then I say inherit on everything, that seems kind of weird because now, like from a uh, normal properties perspective, each one of them will get that new value, each one of the children will get that new value, but then the parent will also have that value, so effectively the parent can only have two active, like right, but, at uh, time. Uh, and yes, so that one's a little complicated, uh, it was one I was talking about a minute ago, uh, whether we want the, the top level one to also apply over. And in this particular case, I think the allocator is only going to look at the actual disk it's writing to, and maybe we'll kind of ignore the, the top level BDEV one. Is uh, it common to that? Like, you can just name it, like, uh, you know, uh, QDEVs per leaf. And if yeah. you set this to your parent QDEV, yeah. that's very really clear that's for the leaves anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah and, and there are some where you won't be able to inherit. In the example of a rate Z, if you set no allocate, it only makes sense for that apply to the top level. You can't right. have an individual member of the uh, the RAID Z not take new space uh, new allocations. Uh, so it's it might get quite complicated. <laughs> um, I have two comments. One is uh, I think you should at least consider uh, making the properties like not have crazy inheritance. Yeah. Um, because it, it like having been in that code like. It's it's not a small amount of code to make that work right in all cases, um, and it might be sufficient for the properties that we actually care about to just say, like, yeah, you can set it on the root or on a, you know, a top level VDEV, but all that that does is go sets it goes and sets it on all the children right then. It's just recursive, and that's it. Like, there's no inheritance. Yeah, it's just like we just slam it down on everything below that. End of story. Like, I'm it's all for making way it easier to implement. It's not that conceptually difficult. Um, so, yes, you know, if right. you run out of time, I'd rather see that than yes. not see this at all. Yes. <laughs> and, you can control, and you can control the data sets, right? Exactly. You're like, oh, I want to choose to organize these things this way. It's all it's all in your head, right? right. right. Versus yeah. the, the VDEVs, like, it's like, this is laid this out. Is hard work. Yeah. yeah, so uh, that's why I think the inheritance is less powerful and, and crucial. I'm all for making that easy. Um, the other, sorry, I have one more comment um, from online, from the live stream, uh, from uh, someone whose handle is biking with panda. Uh, they asked if you could give an update on Z standard support. Um, I think George and Brian and I have worked out the, the last problem this morning, and uh, hopefully that'll land in FreeBSD in October or November, once the code freeze is done, and then I'll start working on upstreaming it to ZFS and Linux. Awesome, thank you. One more. Uh, so in the case where you have a, a dry replacement, so I have a raised Z set, and now I suddenly have a mirror underneath that. Have you tried to reason through that scenario? Well, in particular, like if, if we don't have inheritance, if we've done a recursive set, then it gets more complicated there as well, right? Now we've replaced one of the members of the, the raised Z. Um, so, yeah, that will have to be dealt with too. Um, so for some of the stuff, like maybe it makes sense to just only have that property on the top level VDEV and just, it, yeah, maybe we have types of properties and we just say this only applies to top level VDEVs and this only applies to leaps or that. Are you planning to have like this sort of debriefing session during the hackathon to maybe talk about sure. the design for that? Yes, love more guidance. I'm just making this up as I go along. As, you know, the first, all I had to begin with was uh, a like comment property so I could write a string of text about each disk for whatever reason. Uh, and then trying to expose all the stuff you can get from equal status and other cool fields I found while looking at the definition of VDEV T. <laughs>
Um, oh, I was I was just gonna say I think like with the inheritance stuff, I think probably the big difference, at least conceptually for me, is that data sets can be like arbitrarily deep and there's no real like they they're kind of each data set is kind of the same. Right. With and, and places, you can take one from here and move it into this tree and the, the exactly inheritance so changes and that doesn't happen. Devices, it's like there is one root. Yeah. Underneath that are the top of DFS, which have a very specific definition in DFS. Yeah. And underneath that, you pretty much almost always have this one layer, yeah. except for when you're replacing something, then you have one other layer there. Yeah. But it's like a very defined kind of Yeah, thing. so it might make more sense to just have two types of properties, one that applies to top-level VDEVs and one that applies to leaves, and, and we don't try to, you know, so that uh, instead of having to recursively set the, the property, we just set it on the top level and not have to worry about it when, uh, for example, you replace one disk in RAID Z. Uh, although I suppose that means we have to, you know, teach the resilver code to rewrite the Zap or something as well, or probably the people replace or whatever. Uh, and, uh, so then I also just try and decide what makes most sense for if you were trying to recursively get the properties, uh, or you want to, I want to get all the properties that are set on this VDEV and what the command line interface would be like the, for that would look like. Uh, whether we just reserve the word all as a, a property or what. And then obviously we'll need channel programs integration so you can use that for the properties, right? All right, thanks a lot. Uh, I do a podcast every Wednesday uh, about what's happening in BSD and ZFS. Usually, answer two or three ZFS questions in each episode because that's what people write in. Uh, and we've interviewed uh, lots of the people here, and uh, we'd be glad to interview anybody else who's here who would like to volunteer to spend half an hour talking to me uh, on camera. Uh, and we could do that. Thank you. Cool.